I am not in the best of moods. And the reason is, I had a wonderful, wonderful opportunity right here in the palm of this hand. And I had to let it slip away. A good friend, he calls me up. He says, hey, Chidi, do you want to help me with some stuff? So I ask, of course, what kind of stuff? And I ask because some of my friends have strange ideas. So I ask what kind of stuff? He explains, and it's just great stuff. It's the kind of stuff anybody would like to do. And then on top of that, the additional bonus is there's a fee, and it's a wonderful fee, and I'm, you know, my work is respected. And then he tells me the location, New York, New York, and my heart sinks. Why? Because due to what can only be called a great and severe injustice, uh, I am banned from New York City. Um, so, of course, I had to turn this down. It hurts. It's very painful. But I would like you to tell me, once I've explained the whole situation, I'd like you to tell me, did I deserve the label and punishment I received? Now, it all began a long, long time ago, and so I was much, much, much younger, infinitely more foolish. And the company I worked for gave me an opportunity to spend six months working in the New York office. And I must tell you, I've, I've been very lucky in my um, working life. When I have worked inside companies, they're generally amazing places filled with wonderful people. Just. I've just been that lucky. And this was one of those great, great companies. And it was just to give an example of how great my accommodation in New York was a house owned by the total boss of the company. So she wasn't the half boss or quarter boss, but she was the total boss of the company. I was just a minion. And yet she sort of said, well, look, I've got this house free, so you can stay there for six months. And it was a beautiful house in an old area of... Uh, the city. I'm not mentioning where it is. I'm not quite sure how we stand on those things. Um, I'm no longer on speaking terms with the lady. But um, so I land there, get into this house, beautiful house. It's filled with details. Everywhere you look were just details. It was just magical. And the view, magical. The neighborhood, mag it, it, was, it was like being in a film. And I settled in. And because I felt so good, I turned into, I suppose you could say, a super genius. So at work, my productivity was extremely high. You know, target, smashed it, another target, smashed that. Here's a target, knocked that out of the way. I was flying for the first six days. And then on the sixth night, I'm asleep. I was having, uh, I suppose, what you could call a luxurious dream. Wonderful, wonderful dream when this odd sound crept into the dream and messed everything up. So it was this sort of ch -ch -ch -ch. It's like once I sort of woke up and uh, looked around. I couldn't see anything, it was dark of course. Um, I didn't want to put on a light, so I listened. And slowly I began to pick out this ch -ch -ch -ch. I could follow it around. And then finally I put on the light and there halfway up the curtain was a mouse. And it's okay, so I knew it was a mouse, no big deal. Remember, if you live in Amsterdam, your relationship with mice is quite interesting, especially if you live in the middle of Amsterdam. You cannot get rid of the mice, so you sort of come to an arrangement, you say, look, there, 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 and there. You can go, but you can't come here, and the mice are like, okay, sign all contracts and everything, and you're good with mice. So you generally ignore mice. Amsterdam mice love being ignored. However, um, so I plan to ignore this mouse once I saw it was a mouse. However, American mice, they're very, um, they're sensitive in a very different way and they do not like being ignored. So I try to go back to sleep. So the mouse comes onto the bed and starts dancing around. And when I say dancing around, I'm, I, this may seem like, look, you're talking nonsense, but trust me, I, with these, these eyes here in my head, I saw a mouse just about this far away from me, and it was sort of doing a kind of da 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 da, da 
da da da da da da da da da I I had never seen such a thing in my life, and I I was absolutely, I was practically speechless. But I had to say, Mouse, what are you doing? I had I had no choice. So um, and then to make matters worse, the mouse spoke to me. Now I think. The general idea of a dancing mouse on the bed in front of you was bad enough, but mm. having the mouse speak back, talk back, it, it jangled my nerves to no end. And um, it just annoyed me. So the mouse starts saying, listen, I'm dancing, and do you have a problem with that? And I said, well, I'm trying to sleep, so could you just buzz off? And the mouse said, are you saying you're not going to talk to me? I said, yeah, I don't know. Why should I talk to you? I mean, you're a mouse. I'm a human being. I have things to do. I need to sleep. I'm on a roll at work. I'm super productive. I'm like a mega genius there. Superstar. Wow, that was amazing. I just must say that was a good, good period. And the mouse doesn't seem bothered by this. The only thing, the only issue the mouse has is it needs attention. So I do my best to ignore the mouse. And uh, I try and sleep, turn off the light. And uh, yeah, two minutes later, the mouse is back. The signs of jumping on my face. And I don't want to be harsh. I don't want to be brutal. I don't want to be violent. Normally, I'm not that kind of person. But this mouse, just to put it shortly, got on my nerves for three and a half hours solid, nonstop. This mouse worked on my nerves and worked on my nerves. And uh, I, was, I was feeling very, very uncomfortable. Uncomfortable is a good word. And so I went to the bathroom to splash cool water, cool refreshing water on my face to try and just clear my mind and think, what would I do with this arrogant mouse that just wanted attention? I could not, oh man, it, 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 was, it was rough, it was rough. So um, a funny thing happened when I splashed that water on my face because I looked in the mirror and when I looked in the mirror I noticed that my eyes had sort of squeezed up and they had started looking incredibly mean and I began to feel as if my body was possessed by some great force. Now it turns out later, of course I didn't know this at the time, but it turns out later that I was possessed by the ghost of a man who was driven mad in that very house by mice a number of generations earlier, of course. So, uh, and at the time, I didn't believe in possession or ghosts. Now, well, it's good to have an open mind in life. So I'm possessed uh, by this man's spirit. And of course, my whole attitude changes. And Usually I'm sort of like, oh, this mouse, you know, go away, mouse, da 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 da. And something happened, my language adjusted, my views on life, especially the life of a mouse, adjusted. And suddenly this voice just, I heard my mouth saying this, I had no idea why. But it said, <laughs> this motherfucking mouse has got to go. And I had no, I never used this word. I mean, I do swear sometimes, but not much. But suddenly I just found myself saying motherfucking this and motherfucking that and having these dark, dark thoughts about the mouse. And then I remembered something back in Amsterdam. Our upstairs neighbor told a story of shooting a mouse with a BB gun, with an air gun. And I thought, that is exactly what I need. And it just so happened that the seventh morning that is after the sixth night, it was a Saturday. There I was, baggy-eyed, sort of like Louis Vuitton bags under my eyes. It was terrible. And I found my way into one of those stores that sell various kinds of equipment, including guns. And I went there, and um, I saw a guy. And the guy says, how's it going, son? I liked, he was very pleasant, very open-minded. And I said, I need a gun, a rifle. I need some equipment. He said, is it serious business? And I thought for a bit, and I thought, yeah, it really is serious business. And so to cut a long story short, um, I left there with a automatic rifle, a shotgun, and a nine millimeter pistol. And I went home, and that night I waited for the mouse. And when the mouse appeared, 
the first thing that, the first thought that lit up my head as I grabbed that shotgun and pumped it was die, motherfucker, die. Well, the thing is, I'd never held a gun before and let alone one in anger, so I didn't actually know the best way to point it. So I sort of see the mouse move that I'd fire. And you know the funny thing is that if you fi- in the films like they fire these guns it's like bang bang and everything's cool but if you fire a gun it it just throws your arm backwards I mean the shotgun it it threw me to the other end of the room but I didn't give up so I was blasting away um, completely inadvertently mind you inadvertently destroying a beautiful home. And the worst thing of all is I didn't get them out. So in the end, I decided, you know what? The neighbors were screaming and making all kinds of noise. So I called the police. And uh, because I had experience, even at that young age, I knew that um, it's better that I don't go to the front door. So a terrified neighbor, I told her to come up here. So a small Caucasian lady, I said, look, you answer the door and explain to the police what's going on. And so I think that kept me alive. Um, it didn't keep me from being arrested. And um, we went through a whole process, the end of which was that I was banned, banished, totally banished from New York City. I was asked never to ever, ever, ever appear there again. Um, my relationship with the total boss of the company I worked for broke down. I was fired in disgrace. My name besmirched all over the ground. Terrible, terrible shame. And um, I'd like you to tell me, given what you now know, am I, am I, as you see me standing here, a house-breaking vandal? Or, on the other hand, a common man, a common working man, trying to get a good night's sleep.